let's see how to install a Windows 11 virtual machine on VirtualBox. So first things first, let's make sure that we have VirtualBox installed. Let me open my web browser and to install VirtualBox, let's just go to virtualbox.org. So this is the website and from here we can download VirtualBox and I'm going to choose Windows hosts and it's being downloaded. I already have it installed, but I'll install it anyway. So I will have the updated version, the most up-to-date version. Okay, it was downloaded. Let's go ahead and install it. So this will install VirtualBox 7.2.2 and I'm just going to go with the default. So we need to accept the license agreement. And here I'm going to leave everything with the default options, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's install. So next, install. Okay, let's give it a minute. It will be installed. Great, it was installed. In a minute, we're going to start VirtualBox, but not yet. Before that, we're going to get back to the web browser. And now I want to download the ISO file. This is the file that we're going to need to install the Windows 11 virtual machine. So let me go to Google. And here I'm just going to look for Windows 11 ISO file download. And if you write this, it should come up as the first option. So download Windows 11. Just do me a favor here. Make sure that the website that you're going to is actual by Microsoft. It's supposed to be Microsoft.com. It's supposed to be the option that pops up on the top of the list. But in any other case, just make sure that you're going there, that you're not downloading any shady stuff. So for me, this is the case, Microsoft.com and download Windows 11. This is what we want. I also will leave a direct link here, just in case you prefer not to look for it yourself and you want to make sure that you are downloading the right file. Anyway, here we can download it. So we need to scroll down because there are several options, installation assistant, uh, Windows 11 installation media, all kinds of stuff that we don't really need. What we do want is this, we, uh, download Windows 11 disk image, ISO. Do you remember this name? ISO is the file type that we're going to use in VirtualBox. So here I'm, I scroll down to this option. It's the last option among the three. And here I'm going to select download and we only have one option here, which is Windows 11. This is what we're going to choose and confirm. Okay, and now we need to choose one. So it opened these new options at the very bottom of the page. So once again, I need to choose one and you need to choose your language. I'm just going to go with English, but of course you can choose whatever language you prefer and confirm. Great. And now we actually got the download link and it says 64 bit download. I need to click on it and it's being downloaded. It's quite a big file, okay? It's over five gigabytes, so it will take a minute. Just have to wait it out. Okay, so it took quite a while, but we finally have it. And here is my Windows 11 ISO file. As you can see, it's quite big, over five gigabytes, but we have it, so we should be fine. Let's now move on to actually opening VirtualBox. This is probably why we installed it. Here it is, VirtualBox. Now, as you can see, I already have here to Debian virtual machines, disregard them. In your case, this list is probably going to be empty. And if it is empty for you, it's completely okay, completely fine. We're going to create our Windows virtual machine now. So to do that, we need to click on new. And here we need to provide a few details. First, we need to provide the name for this new virtual machine. I just call it Windows 11 virtual machine. Then you can change the installation folder for the new virtual machine. As you can see, this is the default but it can be changed. I'm just going to stay with a default option here. You can change it if you really want. Then we need to move on to selecting the ISO image file. This is the big file we just downloaded. So we need to click here on this drop down box. Then we need to choose other and we need to navigate to the folder containing our ISO file. Chances are that it's going to be in your downloads folder. So click on downloads and you should be able to find this file. And as you can see, it's here, Windows 11 24.iso. So I'm going to choose this file and open. And as you can see, VirtualBox automatically detected the type of operating system that we are about to install and it correctly identified it as Windows 11. Now, by default, it will install Windows 11 Home. A lot of people, especially with virtual machines, prefer to use the Pro version. So to do that, we need to click here where it says Home and change our selection to the Pro version. So this is what I'm going to go with. Here you can uncheck this box proceed with unattended installation, but it is going to make our life a bit simpler during the installation itself. So I am going to leave it checked. Now we can move on to the next step, which is set up unattended guest OS installation. And here first we need to provide the username. This is going to be the username for the new Windows installation, like the username within the virtual machine. I'm just going to use my name as the name for this new user. And we also need to provide the password. I'll just go with something simple. Now for the product key, it doesn't really matter what you put in. Of course, if you have an actual product key, go ahead and write it down. But even if you don't, it's okay. Just write something, just go with once. Then we need to provide the host name. It tries to use the same name we used for the virtual machine itself, but 
thing is it cannot have spaces so I'm going to replace the spaces with dashes and this should be okay and another thing you should do is check this box install guest editions it's going to make our virtual machine a bit easier to work with let's move on to the next configuration step which is specify virtual hardware and here we need to specify how much memory we want to allocate to this virtual machine now the minimum for Windows 11 is 4 gigabytes it can work with 4 gigabytes and if you are limited on resources if your host machine is limited on memory you can go with 4 gigabytes if you can if you have a bit more for example I have 16 gigabytes on my host on my physical computer so I prefer to increase it a bit I'll go with 6 gigabytes and it should improve performance a bit of course if you have more than 16 gigabytes you can allocate even more just make sure that you're staying within the green zone right try not to go into the red zone because it can make the host itself less stable after all everything is virtualized by the host machine so try to give a generous amount of RAM but don't overdo it as for the number of CPUs, once again, it depends on the number of CPUs that you have on your host. In my case, I have 16 CPUs, or at least 16 cores, but it is represented here as 16 CPUs, so I can increase it a bit. Let's go with 6. And lastly, we need to specify the virtual hard disk. So by default, it's going to allocate 80 gigabytes, which is fine. It's a bit too much for me. I think that 50 gigabytes is more than enough, but this is really up to you. And this is the name that's going to be given to this new virtual disk. Here you can pre-allocate the full size and it basically means that it won't grow over time as it really needs the space but it will take these 50 gigabytes or whatever you specified and it's going to pre-allocate everything up front. Unless performance is really critical for you, most of the time you don't really need this option so I'm just going to leave it unchecked. And if you already have a virtual disk from another virtual machine, you can also choose an existing one. I don't so I'm just going to leave it this way and let's finish. And that's basically it. It's now going to start, it's going to power up, and the installation will start automatically. So here it is, it's starting. And now, once it starts, okay, something here seems to be stuck. Let's try again, so I'll click on machine and reset. It shouldn't happen, but I know it happened anyway, so let's try to reset. Okay, looks better. And now we need to click enter, okay. Uh, you saw it, it said that if you want to boot from the DVD, basically you just have to press enter there. If you don't press enter, it can get your virtual machine into a stuck situation, so just hit enter. And it's loading, we need to give it a minute. Okay, here on the side you can close this option, mouse integration, we don't really care about it, let's close it. And now the installation is about to start, so it's getting things ready or whatever. Okay, once again we can type in a product key, but you don't have to. I'm not going to provide a product key for this virtual machine, so I'm just going to choose I don't have a product key. Now the installation itself is going to take place. It's a long process, it takes a while, but you basically don't have to do anything, you just have to wait. Okay, and now it's actually installing Windows 11. So it means that the configuration passed through, it seems to be okay, and now it's actually installing Windows 11. And as I said, this is going to take some time, so it's better to have some patience here. Okay, and after waiting for a long time, here we have it, our new installation of Windows 11 on this virtual machine. Now, I want to say that during the installation, for some reason that I don't really understand, it got stuck, like it completely stuck, it didn't progress anymore. So what I had to do, once again, as you saw before, I had to click on machine and then to reset. And when you click on it, it says that you will lose information, blah, blah, I had no choice. So something seems not to be perfect here, but it worked. I mean, after I restarted during the installation, you know, it got back to the point it has been in and it continued, so eventually it worked. And now we actually have this virtual machine, we can use it, you know, like any normal computer. Now, the nice thing about it is because we also installed the guest editions, we can now switch to full screen mode. So if I click on view, I can choose full screen mode. And by the way, you can use your right control together with F. This is the keyboard shortcut. So let's try it, it gives us the warning, so let's switch anyway, and now we can see our virtual machine in full screen. If I want to get out of full screen mode, I can do one of two things. First, and the more convenient option in my opinion, is right click, the right click, okay, we have two controls on our keyboard. So the right one, along with F and it minimizes the virtual machine, so now it's not full screen anymore. But if for any reason you don't want to use the keyboard shortcut, you can also move your mouse to the bottom of the screen, then you will see these options, and then you can click here. The second to last one, just next to the X. And here you have it, go ahead and use it.